This question comes under the category of applications of differentiation. You can see there's a lot of language in here that's all physics language. You've got motion, velocity, acceleration, all that kind of thing. So there's a lot of language here that needs to be unpacked, which is one of the particular uh, peculiar things about this question. And the other thing that's unusual is that you get no equations in this question handed to you. Everything has to be interpreted and answered visually. It's all on the basis of this graph. So um, if you think back to when we were looking at graphing techniques, you're not actually asked to draw very much in this question, but all the stuff that you knew about derivatives and also the implications on what the shape of the graph will look like are going to come into play in this question so you won't be able to interact with many of the numbers at least not um, at least not directly so there is so much here so let's unpack uh, start by starting at the top question it says a particle is moving horizontally so that its displacement x meters to the right of the origin at time t seconds is given by the graph to the right and that's the graph that you've got there so immediately the first thing to notice here which is um, kind of weirds you out and has some implications for the way that you answer the question, is this particle is moving horizontally. Let's just change that so it's a bit easier to see. Moving horizontally, um, and its displacement is given by x, except for the fact that, and this happens all the time in displacement questions, x is on the vertical axis, not the horizontal axis. So you can see it up there. So what it's saying is displacement is measured to the right of the origin. So when you are moving, and to get ready for this, it's weird, when you are moving up in terms of the graph, the actual particle is moving to the right. So up means to the right. And by contrast, if you are moving down on the graph, like so, um, because that means you're moving closer to the origin um, from the right-hand side, you're actually moving left. So all of that is a little bit weird. We're going to come back to the implications of that a bit later on, but for now, I just want to signal that fact that um, this up, down, left, right business is something that you need to be conscious of. Um, the units are in time, uh, of, of the units of time are in seconds, and then the units of uh, displacement are in meters, so that might become important later on. We'll see how we go. All right, so the first question says, in the first 10 seconds, what is its maximum distance from the origin and when does it occur? So there's, there's two questions there, right? Uh, number one, uh, what is its maximum distance? So that's going to be a displacement unit of some kind. And then the next question is, when does it occur? So we're gonna have to have a time that goes with this, okay? Now what I've got down here is a bigger version of this same graph for us to work with here. Um, you can see that I've got um, my distance. You can see it's, it's saying like when in the first 10 seconds is its maximum dis distance from uh, the origin. So I have more than 10 seconds worth of a situation here. Um, this goes all the way over to 12 and presumably further on, but I'm only interested in the first 10. So what we'll do is we'll do a, a sort of domain restriction, I guess, on the part of the graph that we're interested in. Um, I want 10, so I don't have a 10 on my axis here, so I'm going to put one. No, I think I'm okay with that. So um, this line's up to here. So this is kind of, that spot right there, that's time 10. So this is sort of effectively, for this part of the question anyway, where my graph is going to end. And then I'm looking for greatest distance from the origin. Now, you can see this particular uh, function for displacement, um, it never goes negative, which is to say that it never goes to the left of the origin, right? Uh, I know this starts to get very confusing, so um, what I'm gonna do here is um, have another graph here, uh, and this is gonna become even more useful later on as we start talking about left, right more explicitly. Um, I'm actually going to rotate this around so that right is right and left is left. So obviously you can just take your page and you can move it around, um, but I can't do that to my screen. So hopefully this shows you, this convinces you, right, that the um, axis, which is now sitting vertically, is where the origin is, okay? So moving to the right is uh, heading over in that direction over there, and you're never to the left of the origin, right? So the greatest distance is, well, how far to the right do you go in that first 10 seconds? So coming back to our original graph, you can see in this section that's relevant, and we'll highlight it like so. This is the first 10 seconds here, and then I stop. So clearly it's the highest point on this graph. Um, we would say the global maximum within that domain, uh, which I think we can clearly see, we can clearly identify is happening here. So that's uh, that distance, like what is the distance? It's eight meters. So I can start to write some answers now. Um, the greatest distance is eight meters. And uh, because it's a question of distance, doesn't matter whether it's to the left or the right, so I can say eight meters is the maximum distance. 
And then the next thing they ask is, well, when does that occur? So because it's a when question, I'm gonna go down to the time axis and you can see it goes all the way down from this point down to time equals three. Um, so eight minutes is the max distance which occurs at or after three seconds. Okay, so there's part A, not too dramatic. Let's come back to the questions. It says, by examining the gradient, find when the particle is stationary, moving to the right, moving to the left. So let's do the easy part first, which is stationary, right? Now, we call um, you know, stationary points stationary points because of this idea that they sort of represent like when the particle stops moving, right? So essentially, I'm just looking for stationary points. Um, I also noticed that part B, has stopped the restriction in part A about the first 10 seconds, so I won't worry about that anymore. I'm now just looking at the entire graph, okay? So, when is the particle stationary? Well, let's get rid of all of our previous working here because it's no longer relevant, so I'm just gonna clear that off. Um, I'm looking for stationary points, so I can see one here, which was actually the same spot I had before. That makes sense because we were looking for a global maximum. It happened at a turning point which is also a stationary point, in this context anyway. And then you've got uh, this other stationary point down here at the bottom. So when is it stationary? I've got two places, two times rather. So I'm gonna say part B, part one. Um, particle is stationary. Um, at three seconds and also at nine seconds, looking at where I've put that other uh, blue marker. Okay, so there are the stationary points. That wasn't too complicated. But now we need to think again about left, right, and uh, what that means for the gradient. Okay, so you can see here, um, let's, let's answer the question first of when it's moving to the right. Okay, so if we look at my left, right graph over here, when is it moving to the right? Um, you can highlight these sections, right? Starting from time zero, let me go back to this color. So from time zero, I'm literally moving to the right, as you can see over here, right? <laughs> you see what I did there. So that section in there, it's moving to the right. And then if you have a look at this other section that I'm gonna highlight here, this now I'm literally moving back towards the left. So I'm not, I'm not interested in that part of the graph. And then um, after that stationary point, which we already identified at time nine, it starts moving to the right again, okay? So you can see it's literally moving to the right, moving to the right. So these are the sections I'm interested in. So when you come back to your original graph, that's to the left of this stationary point and to the right of this stationary point. So I guess in terms of thinking about the gradient, I can interpret positive gradient as moving to the right. So I'm really asking the question, um, and you can write this down for yourself if you like, but I'm asking for when is the uh, derivative, it's not dy, it's dx, dx on dt, when is it positive, okay? In this scheme, moving to the right means the positive direction. Um, and it's worth mentioning, like I could have defined this differently. I could have said that moving to the left was positive, um, and it just depends on what the situation is. So you must read carefully to say what is it telling you. Um, it is conventional that going to the right is positive, but um, it could be anything you like. That's kind of the point of this. You can define the origin and the directions uh, in whatever way is convenient to you. Okay. So now I know dx onto t is greater than zero. When does that occur? And the answer is, um, we start from time zero. So um, I'm actually going to say, um, you know, for the first question, I could have said time equals three and nine. So here, in terms of the inequality, it would be from time zero. Um, and then I end at three. I can't say that it's moving to the right at time three because we just said in the previous part that you're stationary at that point. So, so that's that part there. Um, and then for the right hand side, um, it, t it picks up at time nine. So time is nine and then you go all the way to the right and there's no indication on the graph that that ever stops. So it's just a one sided boundary. So I would convert that into words by saying um, particle is moving uh, right between zero and three seconds and after nine seconds. And you can see this is just my, um, my, my verbal translation of all the symbols that you can see up here. This is obviously much more concise, um, but the question is handed to us in words, right? So therefore I'm gonna use words in my answer. 
The final part, uh, in this section anyway, part three, moving to the left. So this is, well, it's the part of the graph that hasn't been highlighted yet, right? So part three, um, I'm looking for dx on dt being negative. So dx on dt is being negative in that last section up above. I'll highlight that in red as well. So that's this part um, here on the right hand graph. You can see it's literally moving over to the left over there, which corresponds to on the original graph, uh, moving in the negative direction. So that's between three and nine. So I will write that down both in terms of an inequality. Um, that's between, what do we say? Three and nine. And what that means is I would translate that into words. Particle is moving left. Uh, between three and nine seconds. And nine seconds. Okay, now I'm just going to pause for a brief moment and I'm gonna move this out of the way because I have other working down here which is going to become important later. So um, I needed a new page. So let's paste this back on my new blank page. All right, that's better.